team which defeated Celtic on New Year's Day. David Robertson coming back after Stephen Presley failed a late fitness test. Killy boss Tommy Burns left himself out of the side, bringing in Mark Roberts, who scored when Killy beat Rangers at Ibrox, and that was, of course, back in August. The referee was Les Mottram from fourth, summariser Gordon McQueen, match commentator Jerry McNee. So away we go for the first big match here at Ibrox in 1994. When I say that, uh, in the knowledge, there were 20,000 here the other day for an old firm reserve game, with around 45,000 in the stadium this afternoon, just about the same as we're here when Kilmarnock won by two goals to one back in August. And Kilmarnock very positive that day and uh, threatening to do so here as well, but uh, a little bit of a miscue there by Ali Mitchell. And the ball drifts out of play for the throw to Rangers. David Robertson back after his injury. It's aimed at Hitley, who's been very much the player of the season so far for Rangers. Robertson's head up. Long one away by Brown. And a bit of a stumble there by Andy Milne. It's picked up by Craney. It's challenged by McCall. It breaks to Trevor Stephen. Good play by Stephen, picking out Alexa Mikhailichenko. And he has to settle for the throw-in. Well, for the challenge from Gus McPherson, who began his career here at Ibrox. Good challenge that by Blank. This is Sean McSkimming. That's Craney, leaving it to Black. And Nick stringing the passes together, it's McSkimming sending it through, and headed behind there by Robertson. Well, Ali Mitchell was coming in behind him, and the Rangers defender did the wise thing. And set the ball behind for the corner. So a positive enough start by Kilmarnock. And it's Mark Riley going out to take it. And uh, there's Mark Roberts who scored here in the last match between the teams. High win played in and uh, Goff's up there for Rangers. And this fan is Montgomery. This is Black over the crack there. And uh, knocked away by Goff. Another from Trevor Stephen, not a very good one. And uh, that's not a bad effort going in from Ali Mitchell. Well, they've certainly adapted a positive attitude to the start of this game, Commander, stringing a few crosses together, and it eventually fell that one to Ali Mitchell in a long-range effort. It wasn't, wasn't that far off the mark. This is Danny Craney, taking it off to Black. Craney again, skimming, calling for it. Goff reads the situation up. Still in play. It's Gary Stevens for Rangers. Given away though to Black, and uh, the home crowd not too happy at the moment with Rangers' play. This is Jury. He needs some help here. It's not forthcoming, but uh, he gets the free kick. And he's training in there. But uh, Jury surrounded by Kilmarnock players. This is Robertson. And looking for Hitley. And Hitley pushed there from behind. Andy Milne, the culprit. And a real chance here for Rangers now. But, uh, so many players who can shrink the ball so well. So Bobby Geddes with a lot to do. So Hitley's there. So to his jury. And it's jury who strikes it. It's deflected and just past the post. Rangers have the corner, well struck by Gordon Jury, almost bringing him his fourth goal of the season. Yeah, it was a dangerous place to give a free kick away, particularly the way Gordon Jury strikes the ball, but the commander defence stood its ground there and is deflected for a corner kick. So Jury in there at the near post as Trevor Stephen prepares to take this one for Rangers. Goff's up there challenging, and inches away from the Rangers skipper. A really high floated corner kick. Terrific leap here from Richard Goff, but just sends that one past the post. A little touch by Jury, but uh, picked up by Montgomery. Given away though. This is Jury. Mikhailichenko's on the far side. That's a good ball, despite uh, Ali Mitchell getting a touch to it still. It's Mikhailichenko looking for Hatley. 
At the offside flag, we get up on the far side. And uh, the Rangers fans unhappy. Well, it was a terrific ball in the first place from Jury out to Mikhailichenko. Then Mikhailichenko made a run forward and probably should have pushed, pushed that one in the path of Jury, who'd made a good run up to support him on the right hand side. So, Tom Brandt. Challenge going in there from McCall. That's out for the throw to Rangers. McCall leaving it to Robertson. It's a fair bit of length into these throws. It's aimed at Hatley. Picked up by Mikhailichenko. Robertson. Jury. Hatley. Trevor Stephen. Black's in there for Kilmarnock up. It's Mark Riley getting it clear, but it's only as far as McCall. This is Gary Stevens. Looking for Trevor Stephen. A mistake there by Black. And amazingly, Kilmarnock survived. Well, it's a claim for handball there by Trevor Stephen. But as the ball was played through, Black didn't seem to realise there was a Rangers player running in behind him in the shape of Trevor Stephen. And I just wonder if the goalkeeper got a touch in that one. Certainly, Trevor Stephen was claiming. There was yeah. a touch. Yeah, it was just a bit of an up and under here from Gary Stevens and Tom Black. I'm not quite sure whether they thought Bobby Geddes was coming out to collect this one, but he was a bit hesitant nevertheless. John Brown to Mikhailichenko. First time ball to Hitley. Stabbed through there nicely by Hitley. This is Murray. And he's surrounded by Kamarak players. Finds Robertson. He's closed down by Craney. Well, very little space there, and that's out for the throw. Two Rangers. Belichenko trying to keep that ball in play, but uh, it still goes Rangers' way. And a long throw from Robertson, looking for Hatley. This is Jury. Trevor Stephen. Hatley. And he spotted Gary Stevens. And the ball's behind for the goal kick. Well, that was great awareness. Gary Stevens had been free on the right hand side. And Hitley picked him out. Yeah, it was a lovely bit of vision there by Mark Hitley. Um, everything was very tight in and around the edge of the 18 yard box. But uh, not the greatest of efforts from Gary Stevens. So a fair bit of movement there. Eventually it's to Brown. Nelson playing it through, Goff gets a touch. McCall and Brown there. Uh, sixes and sevens, and uh, eventually the Rangers get it clear. That's a good solid challenge there by Gary Stevens. But they've got Jury losing out. Kilmarnock battling away here. It's a free kick against Gary Stevens. Kilmarnock get on with it quickly. This is Black sending in the cross. It's John Brown though, getting the touch for Rangers. Here comes Mikhail Chenko. The referee says play on. He was challenged there by Matt Roberts, the ball broke for him, this is Gordon Jury. Still it's Jury, getting away from Milne, Montgomery is across there with him, still it's Jury to Trevor Stephen. Jury again, this is a good play by Rangers, it's McCall, looking for Hatley. Well, he got the touch, but uh, no par, and the header. Matt Hatley with 21 goals so far this season, a trem tremendous scoring rate in just 31 games, that includes uh, six doubles. Ball coming off the head of Murray, there's Goff. Somebody by Andy Milne, uh, Tom Brown to chase, but Gary Stevens has a bit of time. This is Goff to Brown, Robertson's wide. Kailachenko's ahead of him. Robertson deciding to cut inside, and he's caught there. By Mark Roberts, but, uh, it's Mikhailichenko stepping in, and uh, he wins a throw-in off Roberts. So Robertson, despite that uh, foot fracture, going well into these challenges. And he's obviously made a very good recovery indeed. Missing for the past three games since the defeat here by Dundee United. I'm sure the Rangers fans delighted to see him back this afternoon. We've got another fullback, Gary Stevens. He's caught there almost by Craney. This is Trevor Stephen. And it's skimming back, providing the cover. So 
ball high out of play for the throw to Rangers. Commander really do make it difficult for teams because when they get them, they've got Tom Brown playing the lone striker's role and uh, when the ball does break forward, it gets good support. But also in defensive situations, they get everybody behind the ball, which makes it difficult for teams to break down. There's Robertson playing it through. Hadley getting a touch. Jury's in there. It's headed away by Montgomery only as far as Murray. Again, a lot of Kilmarnock players in there. It's Jury with the goalkeeper and Geddes takes the ball at the second attempt. So, a handshake between Jury and Geddes. I think in these situations, the, the referee's always going to favour the goalkeeper here. Bobby Geddes, favourite for that one, and uh, Jury really has no great chance of getting the ball. Playing with a lot of fire, a lot of spirit, a lot of commitment. That's a nice play by Mitchell. And uh, an apology there from Stuart McCall to the Kilmarnock player. So we're now into injury time in this first half. Old Ali Maxwell keeping a close eye on things as McPherson takes the free kick. It's headed away by Goff. Only as far as Roberts. Looking for Mitchell. Robertson goes with him. Sliding challenge and Kilmarnock have the throw. And there goes the half-time whistle. Well, a good first half by Kilmarnock. And I'm sure their fans are the happier set here at Ibrook Stadium. The half-time score, Rangers nil, Kilmarnock nil. So the second half gets underway, uh, no changes in either lineup. And immediately it's Kilmarnock on the attack. Got the flagging up against Sean McSkimming. Ball played through to him there by Danny Creaney. But, uh, McSkimming doing well in the first half and always a threat on the left side of the field, both on the ground and in the air. Kilmarnock play a lot of high balls into that area for him. Kelly would be happy to leave here with a point this afternoon, having already taken two from this venue back in August. There's Gary Stevens running into trouble. It's Craney playing it through, looking for Brown. That was a good challenge by Richard Goff. Well, it all began with uh, Gary Stevens running into trouble, and it was Goff to the rescue. Yeah, Gary Stevens just getting caught in possession here. And he dinks a nice little ball through to Tom Brown. It was a terrific tackle there by Richard Goff. The danger eventually cleared. Deeply beaten there by Montgomery. This is Roberts. Good ball to Danny Craney. Manic getting players forward now, but Craney completely missing that one. And had a few players on the far side of the penalty area, so Craney will be disappointed there. Smith again on the telephone. And some instructions. Well, Peter Hauser was out warming up a uh, short time ago. I wonder if he's contemplating a change. This is Murray. Kalachenko. This is Jury. But, uh, the referee has uh, stepped in and awarded the free kick. Challenge there. And the referee immediately halting the play. Goff moves forward. Robertson takes a free kick. Jury's in there. This is Hitley. Still Rangers pushing forward. It's McCall. Jury. Robertson. Robertson does well. Gets in the cross. Hitley's up there. And it's well taken by Geddes from point blank. Geddes getting down very quickly indeed. Yeah, the ball coming in from David Robertson, Matt Hatley. And when you expect to score so many goals from those situations this year, but never really get the power behind the header. As you can see here, climbs well enough, but no real problem for Bobby Geddes. The offside flag has gone up. It's a free kick to Rangers. 
just wonder how long or how much more effort Tom Brown can put into the game because he's really been asked to do a tremendous amount of work up there on his own for Kilmarnock he's virtually doing shuttles from one side of the park to the other so it's John Brown for Rangers this is Trevor Stephen getting in behind the defence it's Hitley, it's off the post and it's cleared by McPherson well Trevor Stephen get in behind the defence here drove the ball across it broke right through to Hitley. He touched it onto the post there, it was McPherson who swept it behind for the corner kick. So that gets the Rangers fans going. And there's a man who really started that, Trevor Stevens sending it in. And the diving header there from John Brown. And eventually Kilmarnock managed to get it clear. And the ball just behind for the goal kick. But John Brown there also coming close. And Rangers will make a substitution. So Alexei Mikhailichenko goes off, the Ukrainian leaves the field and the Dutchman Peter Houstra comes on. And uh, Houstra, five goals this season in just 12 games, one of them coming against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park in the 2-0 victory there. So Walter Smith and Archie Knox hoping he can repeat that this afternoon. Robertson, is it Houstra to his left, cuts inside up, still it's Robertson, now it's Houstra. Playing the long one and looking for Hatley. But, uh, that's an indication of how difficult Rangers are finding it. So for the throw to Kilmarnock. It's Tom Black to Danny Craney. And this time it's Rangers ball. from Gary Stevens, taken down by Hatley, has to play it early, looking for Houstra, that's a good ball, it's Peter Houstra, he's done it again! Peter Houstra, 69 minutes gone, and the man who came on as substitute at Rugby Park, and scored a vital goal for Rangers, does it again. Yeah, it was a marvellous through ball by Mark Hatley. A little bit of help there from Gus McPherson. We are mentioned just earlier there, trying to get the ball to history in one against one situations. And as you can see here, that really is a, a bad defensive mistake. Houstra pounces on it and a really good finish. So it's Rangers 1, Kilmarnock 0. Cumberland and Nipson there ahead of Hitley. Nipson, a long clearance and a miscue there by Robertson. Tom Brown, stepping away from John Brown, good play this by Brown, down he goes, claims by the Kilmarnock fans for a penalty, but the referee waving them away, and it's Rangers on the counter-attack, it's John Brown, through for McCall, Hatley's racing through the middle, this is Jury, Gary Stevens is in a lot of space, Jury has a goal, that's a marvellous save by Guinness, it's Hitley, still it's Hitley, it's turned out. Tremendous shot by Gordon Jury. He had Gary Stevens is outside. He had the shot. Guinness did well to block it. Hitley come through. And knocked the ball into the net. Yeah, it was a great run forward initially by Stuart McCall. The ball came inside to Gordon Jury. Just sat up nicely for him there. He didn't half thump it. Bobby Geddes couldn't hold it, although I'd expected him to hold that one. Mark Hitley walks his round him. Rangers 2, Kilmarnock 0. And that all came out of a claim for a penalty at the other end by the Kilmarnock players. John Brown didn't hang about. He burst out of defence to begin the move. And Rangers cashed in. So a smile from Mark Hatley. And no wonder what a season he's having. And he carried Rangers through a very difficult spell. And he's well on course to beat his goals tally of last season. I think it was uh, 28 he had. So just uh, six shot of that target. And the way he's playing, he should easily be done. Well, Rangers really moving up a gear. It's Hitley again. It's another one. It's 3-0. That was a great ball through from Trevor Stevens. 
Sullivan. So two goals in the space of two minutes for Haitley. That one set up brilliantly by Trevor Stephen. Well, they've got the game's over now for Comana. The back four there getting caught a little bit square. Trevor Stephen slides the ball into Haitley's path. And another lovely finish. It's a nice little ball in here from nicely weighted pass from Trevor Stephen. As you can see there, the Comana back four caught very square. Just dinks it over Bobby Geddes. Rangers three, Kilmarnock nil. This is Tom Brown. Trying to switch the play to Craney, but easily cut out by Gary Stevens. Well, he's trying to pick out Jury. Kilmarnock have it again now. It's uh, Tom Blackwell forward. Is there some consolation here for Kilmarnock? Well, Jury runs him all the way through, and that's a goal kick. Good defensive play by Gordon Jury. Running with the Kilmarnock fullback all the way. Yeah, it's lovely for your defenders when you see your centre forward chasing back like that. You know, it was good defending from Gordon Jury, particularly so late in the game. And he thought his legs might have been a little bit tired because he has put in a lot of effort this afternoon. A few fans drifting away now. The Rangers fans certainly happy. Left the stadium on a number of occasions this season in a completely different mood. Here's Black for Kilmarnock. This is Mick Skimming. Gary Stevens in there with him, doing well. Looking for Haitley. Big turn for Rangers again here. A lot of Kilmarnock players caught forward. This is Hauster Haitley's running through the middle. Haitley watching this one all the way, but it was always just too much for him. Good running by the big striker. Hauser did his best to get it across to him. Trying to pick out Danny Craney. But again, Jury takes up a good position, cuts that one out. And there goes the final whistle. Good solid victory for Rangers. And there's the man of the moment, Mark Cately, with two superb second half goals. He set up the first one after 69 minutes for the Dutchman Peter Hauser. Hitley sending through a superb pass and Hauser drilling the ball past Bobby Geddes. Then in 75 minutes, Gordon Jury had a blasted goal. Geddes managed to stop the ball, but Hitley showed his class and walked the ball into the back of the net. Then just two minutes after that, it was Hitley again. A superb through pass from Trevor Stephen. And there was Hitley to finish off. The final score here at Ibrook Stadium, Rangers 3, Kilmana 0. And close on 45,000 were at Ibrox. There was one yellow card. That was from skimming of Killy. After the match, Jerry spoke to Rangers boss Walter Smith. Our home record hasn't been the best. Uh, the crowd were getting a little bit restless at 0 0 going towards the latter stages of the game. And we kept plugging away and plugging away, hoping that a mistake would come. And I think that was uh, the most pleasing factor because we didn't have a lot of chances to keep us going. You know, there was no great goal skirmishes, or we didn't um, particularly look as though we were going to get a goal. And we just kept playing away, and I was pleased in the manner in which we did that. Is there anything left to say about Mark Gately? Well, it's getting more and more difficult each week. Uh, He's been left uh, with a great burden this season until we signed Gordon Jury there, who's came on and I think helped him a great deal in, le in recent weeks. But uh, the other players that we played, Ian Durant, they're not out and out strikers. And he's been left with the burden of playing and scoring goals, and he's accepted both really well. And uh, his form this season has been fantastic for us. You said before the match it was a time to show that Rangers were getting back on the rails. Do you think that's now happening? Well, somebody said he turned the corner and I said, well, I've said that three or four times this season already. So I'm just hoping that that's the case. It's the first time that we've followed up a good result away from home with another good result at home against a team that I think are very difficult to play against. And uh, I just hope that we can now keep that going throughout the season. Well, Jerry, I mean, 3-0, it looks a comfortable enough victory, but for 69 minutes, Killy made it difficult, didn't it? Well, I made the point in commentary yesterday, Jim, that uh, Kilmarnock had managed seven shutouts in the previous eight games. I don't think any other team could match that. Mm. Their trademark is that they work very hard for one another. They shut the opponents down all day. And as Gordon said uh, during the match as well, the likes of Tom Brown, working defenders all the way, they make it very difficult indeed. And I've got a good solid back four as well, particularly the two central defenders, who I think are very good indeed, Montgomery and Millen. But as you see here, they really work hard for one another. And for me, I think they're about the most competitive side in the, in, in the Premier League. And great support. I don't think they've set their stall out um, to defend all the time because they do get bodies forward in numbers as well. I mean, John Brown and Richard Goff had to put in some good tackles to stop Kilmarnock scoring yesterday. But by and large, they put in an unbelievable amount of effort for one another.
I mean, Burns has done well, hasn't he? He's done extremely well. And, uh, of course, uh, Trevor Stephen was a man who went on to unlock that uh, defence yesterday. He played extremely well. Well, you're, you're absolutely right, Jerry. The Killy defence, it did take a, a lot of unlocking. And one of the main men responsible was Trevor Stephen, as Jerry said, who acknowledged that frustration was beginning to creep in. Come here and, uh, and done well. I think we've given them opportunities where we haven't done in the past. And um, as generally... We're all to blame for that. I don't think you can pick on individuals. Um, we've been a bit sloppy as a team defensively uh, and at times that take our chances up front, you know, at, at home. But um, from, from here on in, we want to eliminate that and uh, make it like it used to be for teams to come to Ibrox. Uh, a daunting task to get points here. Um, and hopefully this is the, the turning point for us. Some people would say that wasn't your kind of game today, but mm. you kept working away uh, and, 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 and you, yeah. you, you unlocked it. Yeah, there was, um, it was very tight in midfield, as I say, particularly when I was situated on the field uh, in the first half. Um, there was just a, a glut of bodies, it seemed. But I had one or two occasions to try and open it up, and I uh, was pleased to, to help Mark out with his, with his second goal. A glut of bodies. Gordon, what about Trevor Stevens' performance? Played well yesterday. Still a player that I prefer in the centre of midfield. I think he's more effective there. But certainly yesterday, the, the middle of the park was a bit of a minefield because Kilmarnock played five players in there, and mm. it was just... There was really no room, and he gave him that little bit of width on the right-hand side, and uh, along with Mark Hayler, was certainly the outstanding Rangers player. Played really well, and a lot of good crosses. Unlucky not to score in that situation, and by and large was very effective. I think the important thing now, Gordon, is getting games behind them. Himself and Gary Stevens have suffered a lot because of injury. Yeah, Gary Stevens as well, along with Trevor Stevens, I thought looked very sharp, as sharp as I've seen him in quite some time. Obviously, they've both had injury problems, but uh, as you can see here, Trevor Stevens back to something like his best. Lovely bit of individual skill there. Work rate, absolutely superb as well. Well, they're once again getting into the back post and Mark Haitley setting up Mark Haitley there. He mm. stabs that one against the post. Well, you mentioned Haitley and, of course, we mentioned him an extra time yesterday. What about this man, Jerry? Well, that's, what, 23 goals now in 32 games, which mm. is uh, superb striking. Seven doubles. And uh, I think he's been kind in Rangers because if he thunders into hat-tricks, he takes the match ball away with him, so he's helping the finances there. <laughs> but he really, you know, he's making goals and he's taking them in great vision there. Mm. Well, actually, Milne and Montgomery handled them pretty well in the first half and he never really got much joy, but in the second half, like he's been doing all season, he just well, ran amok and he's, really, he's virtually unstoppable just now, he's just rampant. Mm. It's amazing, other managers, you have Lou McCarry at the start of the programme today, and other managers keep referring to, I wish we had a player like that mm. in our squad, he really is terrific. Oh, there you are, yesterday, it wasn't a bad second half performance, was it? He made one and, and scored two, and good finishing as well. I mean, what can it be like playing against a guy like that, Gordon? I'd imagine pretty difficult, but I mean this has never been a really strength scoring goals, but I mean any striker would have been delighted with a finish like that, just lifting that one over Bobby Geddes. He's certainly carried the burden, you know, Ali McCoy has been the hero for, for years now, and uh, Mark Caitley I think has turned it on and it's really mattered this season. Yes indeed. And we'll take a short break there, but there's still plenty of action and discussion still to come, starting in a couple of minutes from now with Dundee United against Hart.